بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا طيب we reached the part with the author he said in the notes which you all have in sha Allah either on your phone or physically the author he said المياه ثلاثة المياه ثلاثة water is three water is three categories what do you think he means water is three categories is there only three types of water in existence is that what he means what does he mean then exactly three types of water in the shari in the sharia classification okay and these types of water you have to make a note of them very intricately the first of them is tahur tahur with the fatha okay tahur I'll explain to you what that is. If you say it with the Dhamma, this is the action. Tuhur. Tuhur is the action. Tahur is the water that we're going to talk about now, right? With the Fatha. What happens if you say it with the Dhamma? With the Dhamma? A pish, some people call it. It's the action, right? Like for example, Wadu is the thing you make Wudu with. And Wudu with the Dhamma is the action of Wudu. So now here we're talking about Tahur, the first category of water. And the ulama they say, Atahur, Atahiru, fi nafsihi, al mutahharu, li gayrihi. Atahiru, fi nafsihi, al matah, al mutahharu, li gayrihi. It is that which is pure in of itself, okay? And it's purifying for others. It's pure in of itself, and it's purifying for others. Tayyib, this is the first category of water, Tahur, pure water. The one which can be used for wudu, etc. We're going to break these down as we go through the class. The second category of water is tahir. Tahir. Okay, the first was? Second is tahir. Tahir, pure water again, but there's a difference here. Atahiru fi nafsihi ghayrul mutahharu li ghayrihi. Atahiru fi nafsihi ghayrul mutahharu li ghayrihi. It is pure in of itself but not purifying for other than it. So the Tahir water, it's pure, but you cannot use it for purification. And we'll explain later as to why. At the moment, I'm just giving you basic classifications. So, so far we've taken Tahur and we've taken Tahir. Now we're going to take Najis. Najis, okay. Alladhi taghayyara. Najis is impure. Najis is impure. Najis water impure. Alladhi taghayyara ahada awsafihi bi najasatin. Najis water, impure water, is that which one of its properties or more has changed due to an impurity. What are the properties of water? They say the smell, the taste, and the color. These three properties. So one of those properties has changed due to an impurity. Therefore, the water is considered as impure. تَغَيَّرَ أَحْدَ أَوْصَافِهِ بِالنَّجَسِ أو لَاقَاهَا وَهُوَ الْيَسِيرِ Or it's touched the najas, the impurity, whilst being a small amount of water. This is the second part of the definition of impure water. It's a small amount of water and it's touched or it's been touched by something impure. طيب أو انفصل and in najis qabla zawaliha or it was used for washing something which was najis okay before the impurity was removed all of this is going to come clear as we break this down step by step as we go through the classes inshallah طيب. so here this taqseem of three categories right we took how many categories three what is the evidence for this the ulama they don't speak out of their own whims and desires alhamdulillah there's a lot of research that they, they put into this so they said that from the evidences of this is the hadith in Abi Dawood and elsewhere where Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says that the companions once they asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam Ya Rasulullah we have with us a little bit of water whilst on the ships can we make wudu from the sea? With me so far? What did they ask? Can we make wudu from the sea? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said huwa tuhur ma'uhu al-hil maytatuhu it is pure, it's water, and halal for you, that which is dead in the sea, the hadith. It is pure for you, it's water, and halal for you, 
the dead in the sea. So the companions are asking the Prophet ﷺ, can we make wudu from sea water? So what is the wajh al-istidlal from this? When the ulama, they say wajh al-istidlal, this term, it means how do they extrapolate the evidence from this hadith? Okay, this is where it gets interesting. How do they extrapolate the evidence from the hadith? They said, look, the companions, they knew that there was something called impure water. They knew that already, not just water, right? And they knew that there is something called pure water. They're just impure. They know that. Impure and pure water. But they didn't know if the sea water is tahur. Can they make wudu from it? So that is where the three classifications come from, according to the Hanbali scholars. So they knew about Najis water already. Impure water, they know. They knew that there is a water which is pure, but they didn't know, in the sense they were asking the Prophet ﷺ about the third category, can we make wudu from the sea water? Meaning, there is a third category which is called tahur water. So this is an evidence for the three classifications that we mentioned before of the water. And there are other evidences, inshallah. To let you know, as we're going through this course, what's important for you to memorize is what the author is mentioning in the text. That's what you need to memorize. And if you can memorize the evidences that I give you, that's better. Okay, that's better for you to do. Now these extra things that I'm going to mention, the side points, you don't need to memorize them. You just need to know that it's there and understand that it's there, right? So another opinion which is in the Hanbali Madhab held by Ibn Taymiyyah and others is that water is only of two types. Water is only of two types to Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. Tahur, that which you can make purification with, and Najis. He said this middle category doesn't exist to him. He has a lot of reasoning, I'm not going to go into it, but just for you to know that the other opinion is there. Tayyib. But what's the opinion of our author that he's representing for the Hanbali scholars? That there is three classifications. Tayyib. So now the author, he's going to start detailing this first type of water, which is, what's the first type of water? Tahur, ahsantum, tahur. The first type of water, he, he says, Tahurun la yarfa'ul hadith. Tahur, nothing raises the state of hadith, meaning nothing you can make wudu or ghusl with, right? To raise the state of hadith. Wala yazilul najis at ghayruhu. And nothing removes impurity, okay, at other than it. Remember what we said, uh, uh, there is something called al najis al haqiqi, real impurity which in of itself is impure and then there is a najasatu atari'atu that najas which comes upon something which is pure originally like a thobe uh, a drop of urine comes upon a thobe that is a najasatu atari'atu why because it can be removed but the uh, najas al haqiqi the real impurity which is in of itself impure can never be removed right so the imam he's talking about the second one here Najasatu atariatu, the najas which falls upon something which is impure. So again, he says, Tahurun la yarfu al hadith. Tahur is the water by which nothing else can raise hadith. Only Tahur water can do that. Wala yazilu najas atari ghayruhu. And the najasa atari cannot be removed except by Tahur water. Wahu al baqi ala khilqatihi. And it is that which remains upon its creation. Baqi ala khilqatihi. What does it mean remains upon its creation? The water remains upon its creation. Its original state of being created, right? It's pure water. It's pure in its taste. It's pure in its color. And what was the third one I said? It's pure in its smell. Ahsantum. Zakallah khair. It's pure in its smell. When they talk about tahur water, right? They, they mention two things here. They say you have tahur water, which is tahur in reality and that is the one where its three properties are remaining upon its natural characteristics right tahur haqiqatan in reality then you have another one which branches off is tahur hukman tahur in ruling it's tahur not in its original state but tahur as a ruling that when you look at that water you say okay one of its properties has changed due to something pure mixing with it Another pure substance like leaves from a tree have mixed with it. So what's the ruling when I look at that? There's a thousand leaves in that pool of water. I say it's still 
pure, but it's pure as a ruling. The ruling we will come to know later on. So tahur has two uh, types. There's tahur which is haqiqatan in its reality, its natural characteristics. And then we have tahur hukman, that its characteristics have changed due to something pure, but it's given the ruling of still being pure. Why is that ruling? We'll come to know later on. Tayyip? So tell me something about tahur water that the Imam says. What did the Imam say? What's special about the tahur water? Good. Ascent. Ascent. Can anything else remove hadith? Only pure water, right? So if you have, I don't know, what are other liquids? If you have juice, you cannot make wudu with juice, you cannot make ghusl with juice. It has to be pure water. Yeah. Yes, tahur is pure and purifying, the first category. To remove hadith. Yes, so he's talking about now tahur, the first category, which is pure in of, in of itself and purifying for others. So no other category of water can remove the state of hadith. Whether it's, what we call, whether it's wudu or ghusl. Nor can it remove any najis that falls upon the carpet or your clothes. So, nor can other than uh, pure water remove uh, a najis which has fallen upon a carpet or your clothing, right? So this is from the mizat, from the peculiar characteristics of pure water. Now, so this is the definition of pure water. Pure water tahur, okay? Its definition, its meaning is that it's pure in of itself and it's purifying. So he's, he's taking the first category, Tahur, not Tahir. We haven't reached Tahir yet. We're only talking about Tahur, okay? We're only talking about Tahur. We, we have nothing to do with the Tahir, which is the second category yet. Only speaking about Tahur. Tayyip. <clears throat> The Imam, he mentioned that only pure water can raise the hadith and only pure water can remove the najasa, a tari'ah. Okay? There's another opinion in the madhab which is that anyhow the najasa is removed, whether with water or without water, then that is well and good. So our Imam, our author is saying to us that no, only pure water can remove the impurities on the carpet, on the clothing, or elsewhere. Another opinion in the madhab is that anyhow, any which way the removal of the impurity comes about, then that is well and good. Why? Because they say, Al-Hukam yaduru ma'a illatihi wujudan wa adman. Which means that the ruling of a thing is found to be or not found to be based upon the illa. The illa is the cause for the ruling. So for example, if you see, if you know that urine has fallen on the carpet, now it has to have the ruling that it's impure. But if you come back tomorrow, there's no roof here, right? Let's imagine. The sun has shone for a good 12 hours. The wind has blown. You come back tomorrow, there's no traces of urine. But you absolutely know that no water was used. According to the second opinion, that's well and good. Anyhow, the cause for the ruling is removed. That means the ruling will also be removed. Okay? الحكم يدور مع إلته وجودا وعدما. The ruling is given due to its cause, whether it's there or it's not. If it's there, the ruling is given. If it's not there, the ruling is removed. Okay, that's the second another opinion in the matter. But our author, as we said, he's saying to you that only the tahur water, which is pure in of itself and purified for other than it, only that water can raise the hadith and clean away the najasa. With me, inshallah. The Imam, he says, فَإِن تَغَيِّرَ بِغَيْرِ مُمَازِجٍ كَغِطْعِ كَافُورٍ And if this pure water is changed, now we're going to talk about, remember we said there's pure water, which is حُكْمًا, not in re its reality. So he's going to mention now some of its properties have changed of this pure water. But what is the ruling pertaining to that? فَإِن تَغَيِّرَ بِغَيْرِ مُمَازِجٍ كَغِطْعِ كَافُورٍ So, كَافُور it's translated in English as camphor, okay? They say if a piece of this, not if it's ground up, a piece of it is put in the water, okay? And the water changes due to that, the taste or the smell, okay? 
or due to duhun. Duhun is grease, awbi milh al ma'iyin, or the change comes about due to salt water, aw suqina bi najis, or it's heated by najis, the water is heated by najasa underneath it, then it becomes pure but makru. It's pure but it's makru. Okay? So again, he says, fa inta ghayra bi ghayri mumazijin kaqiti kafur. If the water changes, one of its property changes, due to something pure being in it, like for example leaves or this thing that they call kafur, camphor, okay? So it doesn't mix with the water. That's a key, a key thing here. It doesn't mix and dissolve into the water, okay? It kind of just stays on top. But still the water, one of its properties change, right? The ruling is that it remains pure but it's makru. Or if it mixes with grease, or if it mixes with salt water, or if the water is heated by something which is impure underneath it, then it is considered to be pure, tahur, but it's not, it's disliked, it's makru, it's disliked for, to, for you to use it. The Imam, he mentioned here that if you use impurity to heat the water, it's going to be disliked. Why do you think it's disliked? So you have a pot, right, of water. It's cold, you want to make wudu. So you're heating it with, with, um, what's a himar? <laughs> donkey, right? With the donkey's uh, excrement. You're heating with donkey excrement, right? So the Imam is telling us that it's pure water, but it's disliked to use. Why do you think they say it's disliked? The smell may change, something close to that. So there's najis underneath it. There's defecation from the donkey underneath it, which is being used to heat the fire, to burn the fire. What they say is that the smoke, when it comes up, it may bring parts of that najis with it, parts of that impurity with it, and fall into the water. That's why they said it's makru. That's why they said it's disliked to use the water, which is heated by that which is impure. Okay? So it's still, you're still able to use it, but according to these ulama, they said it's makru. And another reason they say it's makru is because some of the scholars from amongst their madhab differed. Some of them said it's pure, like our Imam is saying. Others said, no, it's not pure anymore. It goes to the second category, which is that it's tahir, which is that it's pure in of itself, but not purifying for other than itself. Meaning you can't use it for wudu. Okay? So due to the difference of opinion, they have a rule in the madhab that whenever there's this type of ikhtilaf, whenever this type of differing, they give the ruling that it's makru. Did you get me? Whenever they have these type of differing, where it's based, where there's a group of ulama saying yes, a group of ulama saying no, they generally give the ruling that it's makru. Okay? It's disliked to do this act or disliked to use this type of water, etc. As mentioned by Sheikh Ahmed Khalil in his explanation. And the reason being, because they have them in the books of fiqh, they have the rule which is Mura'atul Khilaf Amrun Mustahab. Mura'atul Khilaf Amrun Mustahab. Just let me apologize, right? I see in some of your faces it looks a bit difficult, but I, I, if, you, if you've done Umdat al-Fiqh before, Umdat al-Fiqh is like the first level. This book has to be a bit more difficult than the previous level. So it has to be a bit more technical, inshallah. But the more you take your notes, the more you go back and you review the videos, etc., it will all come clear, inshallah. So stay with me. Anyway, talking about the scholars, why they gave the ruling as makrub due to the differences of opinions, they said, Mura'at al-Khilaf amun mustahab. That to be aware and to take consideration of the differences of opinion is something which is highly recommended, as mentioned in the books of the rules of fiqh. Not like us today, many of us, when we find an opinion which we know we can differ with everyone else, we get so happy. We feel that like we're special now. We're holding an opinion which is different to everyone else. But the ulama, they say no, to come out of the difference of opinion, to diminish the difference of opinion wherever you can, is something which is highly recommended. But this is not simple. It requires a lot of research and it requires a, a lot of looking into which opinions can be diminished and which cannot. Because as the poet says, فَلَيْسَ كُلُّ خِلَافٍ جَاءَ مُعْتَبَرْ إِلَّا خِلَافٍ لَهُ وَجْهٌ مِنَ النَّظَرِ أو لَهُ حَذٌ مِنَ النَّظَرِ لَيْسَ كُلُّ خِلَافٍ جَاءَ مُعْتَبَرْ Not every difference which comes is going to be considered. إِلَّا خِلَافٍ لَهُ حَذٌ مِنَ النَّظَرِ Except for that difference which is based upon sound evidences as much as possible and sound reasoning. That is the difference that these ulama are talking about. طيب. So the Imam, he says, وَإِن تَغَيَّرَ بِمُكْثِهِ 
And if this water, we're still talking about the tahur water, the pure water, which is pure in of itself and purifying for other than itself, meaning you can make wudu from it and you can remove impurities from it. And if this water, the pure water, changes due to having been stagnant for a long time, stagnant for a long time, or it changes due to it changes due to something has fallen into it or there is something in it which is pure and it's difficult to remove. They give an example, they say for example of fruit that falls into the water. Fruit is pure or tree leaves that fall into the water or you have some type of weed and, and growth that is normally found in ponds and in lakes. Okay, If that's found in the water, then this is part of the ruling. مِن نَابِتٍ فِيهِ أَوْ وَرَقِ شَجَرٍ أَوْ بِمُجَاوَرَةِ مَيْتَةٍ Again, the Imam he's saying, if the water changes due to it being stagnant for a long time or due to something falling onto the water which is difficult to remove and I give you the example of leaves, tree leaves or the example of plants which grow in the water أَوْ بِمُجَاوَرَةِ مَيْتَةٍ or the water is changed because next to the water beside the pool of water there is a dead animal Okay, there's a dead animal. Or the water changed because it was heated by the sun. Or anything else which was pure. Lam Then here, the water is not disliked. Okay? The water is not disliked in all of these situations. If these happen to the water, it's not disliked to use. Meaning that it remains pure and you can use the water without any kiraha, without any dislike. So the first thing that Imam mentioned in this text that I was trying to explain. The first of them is the one which is stagnant water. Stagnant water is known as ma al ma al ajin. Al ma al ajin. Stagnant water, right? If the water is stagnant, the smell may change, the taste may change, okay? Even the color may change. So this water, it's still ruled as being what? Pure, without any dislike in use. And what's the proof of this? Imams in Hadith Al-Bayhaqi and Ibn Hiban they narrate from Zubayr Ibn Awam radiyallahu anhu and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tamadhmada wa ghasala wajhahu bima'in ajinin lamma udmiya wajhahu yawm uhud that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam according to this Hadith in, collected by Imam Bayhaqi and Imam Ibn Hiban narrated by Zubayr Ibn Awam that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of Uhud he made madmada. Madmada is when you're making wudu and you put the water in your mouth and you swish it around. And he washed his face with water which was stagnant. Ma'ul ajin. Okay? On the day of Uhud when his face was bleeding. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay? So this is the proof that stagnant water is still pure. The fact that it changes due to being stagnant doesn't affect its purity. The proof is clearly mentioned in the hadith. Another thing mentioned in the text of the Imam, he said, if in the water there's something difficult to remove, right? He said, that which is difficult to remove. And I said, for example, like leaves falling into it, like plants are growing in the water, okay? The water will change due to these things. Its properties will change, but it's changing due to something which is pure and also due to something which is difficult to remove. And the ulama, they have a rule in fiqh, al mashaqqa tajlibu taysir. Al mashaqqa tajlibu taysir. That difficulty brings about ease. Difficulty brings about ease. So for you to go into the water and pick up all the leaves and to take out all the weeds, extremely difficult, impossible. Only a madman will try to do that, right? So due to the difficulty, the ulama say, based upon our rules in the Sharia, which is whenever we find extreme difficulty, we give the ruling of ease. So the ruling of ease that we keep it to remain as pure without any difficulty, without any dislike. So when you find water, you go to a lake and it has lots of seaweed or anything of that nature in it, lots of leaves in it, it's still pure for you to use. Why is it pure for you to use? Because it's extremely difficult for you to remove that pure substance from the water. Okay? Now if it was an impure substance, that's a different ruling altogether. But because the water is mixed with that which is pure, it remains pure in of itself and pure for you to use. Tayyib? Fadl. When you call something stagnant water, it means that it's not flowing. Exactly, yes. You could have stagnant water, say the rain fell and there was a puddle, mm -hmm. and I came the next day. Mm -hmm. That would be non-flowing water, 
Same. Exactly. What if it's been there for like two months and it's festering, it's growing? So it depends. It depends what's growing in there, right? Like I just said. So if you look at it, it, did everyone hear the brother's question? So the brother's question was, okay, you're saying stagnant water like a lake, etc. That is not flowing, and that's the correct definition. What about rainwater which forms in a large puddle? So the large puddle has lots of things growing in it. So the ruling is you have to look at what's growing in it. What's growing in it? If something which is impure growing in it, then the water is going to be impure. Okay? If it's not something in it which is impure, it's still pure, like leaves or whatever it may be, seaweed or whatever, I don't know, can't think of ideas. Anything which is pure growing in it, okay, pure in of itself, then the water is going to be given the ruling of remaining pure. That is the basic ruling of that situation. So, we came to the other part of the text with the Imam. He said that if there is a dead animal next to this water, okay, then it's still going to take the ruling of being pure water. What's the ruling of a dead animal? Is it pure or impure? And, and by dead, we mean non-slaughtered, by the way. When we mean dead in the Sharia, Al-Mayta, Al-Mayta is that which Mata hatfa anfihi, that which died without being slaughtered, right? So what's the ruling of that? Is it pure or impure? Can you go and eat it? You can't eat it, it's impure, right? So therefore, now you have this impure carcass next to this water. And smell is going to come from that carcass into the water. Here there is ijma upon the ulama that this water is still pure. Why? Because they say Al-illa annahu tagayyarun an mujawaratin la mukhalatatin. They said the reason for the ruling of it remaining pure is because that dead, that impurity didn't mix with the water and didn't dissolve with the water. Rather it was mujawara. Mujawara is it was neighboring the water. So in any situation where the impurity is neighboring the water and not mixing with the water, it remains upon its original ruling which is that it's pure. Okay, so this is also pure water and there's ijma of the ulama. What is ijma? Consensus of the early generations of the ulama. Also the imam he mentioned here that if the water is heated with gas or by the sun etc. then it's not considered to be makruh because hot water, boiling water is one of its natural properties. And also the companions radiallahu anhum, may Allah be pleased with them, they used to bathe in hot water. Okay, so it's still considered as being pure water. The imam he says, if this pure water, we're still talking about pure water, pure in of itself and purify for other than it. If this pure water is used, is used in a recommended purification, like the renewal of wudu, and the ghusl of juma, and the second and the third washing when you make wudu. So if it's used in any of these situations, then it remains as being pure water, okay? But it's disliked. It remains as being pure water because it wasn't used to raise hadith. If it was used to raise hadith, like your first washing of the wudu, the wudu where you've broken the wudu, then it would be tahir, the second category. But because it wasn't used to remove the hadith, that which made you break your wudu, then it's not considered as being impure. Okay? Uh, impure in the sense that it's pure in of itself and it's purifying for other than it. Tayyib. So the Imam he said, if it's in Ustu'mila, this is known, if the water is used, right, in, in uh, like we said, the ghusl which is recommended or the wudu is recommended. This is known as ma al mustamil, ma al mustamil, water which is used. Water which is used. When the ulama they speak about this ma al mustamil, they say al ma al ladi yatasaqat min al aada, ليس al ma al ladi يتبقى في الإناء. Used water is that water which comes off the limbs after you have made wudu or ghusl, and it's gathered together in a pot underneath you of some sort. That is used water, not the water which remains in the pot after making wudu. Uh, so you have a pot in front of you, I'm, making, I'm taking water out from it, right? What's left in the pot is not used water, it's not mal mustamil. The used water is what's coming off my limb and is being gathered in a pot underneath me. That is what they mean by ma ul mustamil. okay? This is an important definition you need to know.
the Imam he mentioned uh, an example of tajdeed, tajdeed of wudu, the renewal of wudu. What is the renewal of wudu? Explain to me what is the renewal of wudu here? What do the ulama mean? What was the last part you said? You, you don't need or you do need? I think the brother is correct. Uh, what he's saying is that the, the, the tajdeed al wudu, what they mean by tajdeed al wudu, the renewal of wudu, is that you had a wudu and you used it. You used it for an act of worship for which wudu was required. You prayed with it, right? You didn't break your wudu. You're not in a state of hadith, okay? So you had a wudu and you used it to pray, and then after the prayer, before the next one, you made another wudu. This is tajdeed al wudu, okay? So you didn't break the wudu, but you used it in an act of worship. This is known as tajdeed al wudu. The Imam he says, "Wa in balagha qulatain, wa huwa kathir." And if this water that we are talking about, the pure water, pure in of itself and pure purifying for others, if it reaches a state of qulatain, qulatain is a large amount of water. We'll define it. Wa huwa kathir, wa huma khamsu mi'ati ratlin iraqiyin taqriban. This qullatain, this large amount of water, they define it as being 500 ritl. Ritl is an old term used centuries ago, right? So what it means now for us, qullatain, this large amount of water, because the ulama, they have a definition of what is large and what is little. Large amount of water is qullatain. You have to remember this, qullatain. Anything below qullatain is considered a little amount of water. And they have different rulings. So qullatain, is considered to be about 191 liters of water, as mentioned by one of the leading scholars of the madhab today, Sheikh Ahmed, Sheikh Ahmed Bahja. He said that it's 191 liters or so. Others have said that it's more than that, and others have said that it's like a, it's a tank. Imagine a tank, an arm's length and a quarter in each direction, length, width, height. Okay, a tank of water, uh, an arm's and a quarter length in in each direction, right? So qullatain is a large amount of water. Say more than 200 liters or so, right? So anything less than 200 liters is considered qalil. Qullatain is kathir, anything less is qalil. Everybody knows what kathir and qalil means, right? Basic Arabic, a lot and little. Tayyib. What's special about this qullatain? It has special rulings. In Sunan al-Arba'a, it's narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu said, إِذَا بَلَغَ الْمَاءُ قُلَّتَيْنِ لَمْ يَحْمَلْ الْخَبَثِ That if water reaches that amount of being قُلَّتَيْنِ then it won't carry impurity. And in another narration, لَمْ, ين, لم يَنْجُسْ It won't become impure. So water, if it reaches more than قُلَّتَيْنِ it doesn't become impure. Except, when do you think except? Yes, due to, excellent, Hassent. if one of the three qualities of it changes due to impurity, that's when and only it will become impure, okay? So qullatain, the large amount of water doesn't become impure unless one of its properties change due to being, due to an impurity mixing with it. That's the only time it becomes impure. So the Prophet ﷺ said in that hadith, as narrated by Sunan al-Arba'a, that when water reaches qullatain, it doesn't carry impurity. And in another narration, it doesn't become impure. Tayyib, narrated by Sunan al-Arba'a. When the ulama of hadith, they say Sunan al-Arba'a, the four books of Sunan, the four books of Sunan, who do they mean? Who are the four books of Sunan? Sunan ibn Majah. Sunan Nisa'i, Abu Dawood, and Tirmidhi. These are the four books of Sunan. When you hear Al-Arba'a, Sunan Al-Arba'a, or Kutub Al-Arba'a, this is what they mean. The Sunnah of Abu Dawood, the Sunnah of Ibn Majah, the Sunnah of Imam Nisa'i, and the Sunnah of Imam Tirmidhi, right? When they say Kutub Al-Khamsa, Al-Khamsa, the fifth, the five, what do they mean? They mean those four plus, plus Imam Ahmed's Musnad, okay? Those four plus Imam Ahmed's Musnad. This is the fifth. When they say Kutub Sitta, 
the six books of hadith, they mean the four sunan, take away Imam Ahmed's, the four sunan, and add to it Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari. Tayyip, some side points. So the Imam, he says, this water, which is qullatain, pure water, reaches the amount of qullatain and above, is known as kathir, فَخَالَطَتْهُ نَجَاسَةٌ When impurity mixes with it, I changed the text a little bit here. So if you, if you cross-reference between what I'm saying and what you have in your notes, because it makes it a bit easier to understand with what I've, the changes I made. فَخَالَطَتْهُ نَجَاسَةٌ And at the end of the sentence it says فَلَمْ تُغَيِّرْهُ And it doesn't change it. So if impurity mixes with the قُلَّتَيْنِ the, the, A large amount of water and the impurity doesn't change it then its ruling is this, that it's still pure. It's pure, right? Its ruling is that it's pure. You know this word najasa you keep hearing, impurity. What is an impurity? How do you know something is impure? Mucus in your nose, is it impure? No. Semen, is it impure? No. Okay, so you have things that between us, we're looking at it, that's, you know, we'll consider it as it being impure. But the impurities that they're talking about in the books of fiqh is that which is defined by the sharia. And we'll come to a chapter of impurities a bit later on, inshallah. So in any case, the imam said that if the water mixes with the impurity and it's qullatain, but it didn't change, okay, due to this uh, impurity mixing with it, then it remains as being pure. But he makes an istithna, an istithna, istithna means exception. He's making an exception now. He says, Except the urine and the excrement of a human being. The urine and the excrement of a human being, as soon as it touches the water, whether the properties change or not, then it's impure according to this opinion. Did you get me? So we have qullatain, which only changes, we said, when the impurities change one of the characteristics of the water. But the Imam is making an exception. He said, except the excrement and the urine of a human being. As soon as it ch touches that water, it becomes impure, whether it changes the uh, properties or not. What's their proof for this? In Bukhari and Muslim, we have the hadith of Abu Hurairah, radiyallahu anhu, where the Prophet said, لا يبولن أحدكم في الماء الدائم الذي لا يجري ثم يغتسل فيه That none of you should urinate into water which is still, okay? And here it means a large amount of water, water which is still and it doesn't run and then make a ghusl from it. So where is the proof for what the Imam mentioned? None of you should urinate into water which is still and not flowing and then make a ghusl from it. So the Imam, he said to us as an exception, he said, He's saying the first step, first step in understanding, he's saying that qullatain is pure water, it doesn't become impure. Right? This amount of water doesn't become impure. Now he's saying, except if the excrement of urine of a human being touches it. And then the hadith says that none of you should urine into water that doesn't flow and then make ghusl from it. The ulama, they say, if it wasn't for the fact that as soon as the urine touches the water, it makes it impure, then the Prophet ﷺ wouldn't have given this statement. Right? This is, this is their understanding from it. That the Prophet ﷺ intends by this that as soon as you do urine into water, then it will uh, make the water impure. That's why the Prophet ﷺ forbade it. Tayyib. And as we said, another opinion in the madhab is that it doesn't become impure water unless its uh, impurities change. Brothers, how long have we been going on for? 45 minutes. We'll go for another 10, inshallah. The Imam, he says, so he made an exception, right? The Imam, he started with water, if it reaches Qulatayn, it's pure. It's not going to become impure. Then he said, except for the excrement and urine of human beings. If it touches the water, automatically becomes impure. Stay with me if you can till the end. Now he's saying, أو خالطه البول أو عذرته ويشق نزحه Or another exception from the rule he just gave of the exception is that if this human excrement or urine touches the water, falls into the water, but it's difficult to remove, then it's still going to be classified as being pure. You with me? 
pure water doesn't become impure. Becomes impure as soon as excrement or urine touches it. Except if that excrement or urine is difficult to remove from the water. Then it doesn't become impure. And he gives an example of this. He says, Like the masani' in the paths of Mecca. In the old times, coming from Iraq to Mecca, they used to have these places like reservoirs, small reservoirs, where the water would gather from the rain, etc. So that the hujaj on their journeys, the people making hajj on their journeys could stop and they could take from that water. So impurities would fall into that water, but it would be extremely difficult to remove. And if you were to give the ruling to the hujaj that this water is impure, it would be extremely difficult for the hujaj to continue with their journey. So due to difficulty, they said that this situation, the water is still regarded as being pure. Tayyib, the water is still regarded as being pure. We'll take one more sentence from the Imam and then we'll stop, inshallah. The Imam says, وَلَا يَرْفَعُ حَدَثْ رَجُلٍ طَهُورٌ يَسِيرٌ خَلَّتْ بِهِ إِمْرَأَةٌ The hadith of a man is not raised by pure water if it is a little amount and a woman was alone using that water to remove hadith from herself completely. Yeah? You need the text. The Imam he says, Pure water, if it's a little amount, it will not remove the hadith from a man if a woman used that water whilst being alone and she made complete purification from it. Yeah? So the ulama, they mentioned that in some rulings, there's something called qiyud. Qiyud are restrictions in that ruling, for the ruling to take place. Okay, so here we have some restrictions for the water to become not tahur for a man to use. What are the qiyud? What are the qiyud? What are the restrictions? It has to be a little amount of water. It has to be for raising hadith. It has to be a woman. It has to be alone. So you have four qiyud. Okay, for the ruling to take place, they have four restrictions, four qiyud. Has to be pure water, uh, has to be a little amount of water, has to be for raising the hadith, okay? Has to be complete purification and has to be for a woman. The evidence is narrated by Imam Ahmed and Imam Abu Dawood, where they said the hadith of Hakim ibn Amr al Ghifari that the Prophet Naha and Yat Tawadda a Rajulu min Fadli Tahur il Mara. Naha and Yat Tawadda a Rajul min Fadli Tahur il Mara. That the Prophet ﷺ forbade that a man makes wudu from the leftover water of a woman. The leftover woman, the leftover water here is not mustamil. Remember, he said mustamil is that which falls from your body and is into a small pot. This is what is actually left in the big pot, which she is taking from. Okay, so that water which is left over is not now allowed for a man to use. Tayyib is not now allowed for a man to use. The qaid of um, the qaid of we said it has to be a pure it has to be a complete purification for the woman so for example if she's making wudu and halfway she changes her mind the man can still use that water it has to be a pure it has to be a complete purification that she made why where did they get this from they got this from the word tahur that a man cannot use the leftover from the tahur of a woman the tahur gives the indication that she made full purification okay she made the complete wudu where did they get the fact that the water should be uh, little for this ruling to apply? They got this from the Sahaba's fatwa. And with regards to being alone, we said that the woman has to be alone when she's making purification. There's two understandings to this. One is that she is alone in that she is not witnessed, right? That's one understanding. One is that she is alone in that no one is sharing water with her. Sheikh Ahmed Khalil in his explanation of this book, he said the more appropriate one, what do you think is the more appropriate one? That she's alone in the sense that no one is witnessing her or alone in the sense that no one is sharing the water with her? Huh? The second one, because the hadith that we mentioned doesn't signify in any way, shape or form that she has to be alone in the fact that there's no witness to her because it doesn't mention that, okay? In any way, shape or form. Tayyip, you got the ruling. So if a woman is alone, if a woman is alone and the water is a little, pure water is a little, and she makes complete purification from it, right? then a man cannot use that water now 
for purification. Question to you guys before we go. Why did the author put this under the category of tahur water if the man cannot use it? Very simple answer. Excellent. The water is still pure for women. It's only a man cannot use it, right? So that's why it's still under the chapter and under the category of pure water, okay? Another opinion in the madhab is that people can make uh, wudu from the water after the woman because the Prophet ﷺ in the hadith in Sahih Muslim tawadda'a bi fadlil maymuna radiyallahu anha that the Prophet ﷺ tawadda'a bi fadlil maymuna that the Prophet ﷺ made wudu from the water which was left over by maymuna radiyallahu anha Inshallah we'll stop here and uh, we're going to start next week from وَإِن تَغَيِّرَ تَعْمُهُ أَوْ لَوْنُهُ أَوْ رِيحُهُ بِالطَّبَخ And if you have any questions that need uh, answering, then feel free. And anything which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shortcomings and mistakes were from myself and shaitan. And if I've been making it too difficult, then I apologize. That is not my intention, inshallah. And I ask you that you go back and you look at the videos with diligence. And I'm sure it will become easy for you. And anytime you have questions, the fit group is there, send them to me. Whenever I'm free, I'll answer them for you. Fadl. We start with the right.